So one of the most important things in Pal World is being able to identify if you have the strongest and most powerful Pal in your inventory. But what happens when you actually have multiple Pals? How do you know and how do you determine which one is the best one? I had a couple questions asked from my previous video that thanks to your questions, we decided to make this more advanced breathing guide to be able to help you guys identify and know how to get the maximum base stats for your characters. So for example, Anime Vibe said, so is it better to breathe or condense? We're gonna answer that question right now. And the other question we had was from Pink. He says, I still don't understand the base value stuff. So if you guys have additional questions from the, what I'm gonna talk about today, drop them in the comment section down below and we'll either reply to them via text or we'll make a video if we think the subject needs, needs, needs a little bit more further explanation. Well, with that being said, let's talk about it. So for the purpose of this video, I went ahead and decided to breathe a Frost Stallion knot. Now, the reason I decided to do this is because I wanted to make this character and I wanted to give you guys a perfect example so you guys know exactly how to identify when you go ahead and breathe in this game. So, real quick. So, in order for you guys should already know what you need, you guys are going to need cake, you're going to need the pals that are going to are going to be needed in order to do that and all you got to do is go to your farm put the two pals there put the cake in the box and hatch the eggs we went ahead and set the eggs in their perspective place and just pretty much waited for them to be ready we hatched them and now we had a bunch of nostalgia knots now the question is how do I, we identify which one's the pal we should be working on? Because if we look at the ones I have right now, I have, these are all level ones, and you basically want to do these. Uh, you want to look at these stats when they're level one. I'm also going to provide you guys with a website and in a place where you're going to be able to get drilled these down so you can also identify if it's the maximum that you got or it's the least maximum you got. So you want to make sure you pay close attention to what I'm about to explain right now. So... We have this level one with the attack of 148. We have another one with the attack of 112. We have one with the attack of 134, attack of 100. And then we have one with the attack of 135. Now, the problem with this is that this is not giving us the right base value. So the first things you want to understand is that there are three different base values within the game when you decide to breathe characters. And unfortunately, I've been, I've been trying to figure out uh, what the vase value are for alphas and shinies uh, and I still haven't been able to kind of drill that down I'm still testing it out because what I'm about to explain is going to be perfectly sense so you guys have any suggestions or any ideas about the alphas and the shinies let me know in the comment section because one of the biggest questions I have is the strongest pal the alpha and the shinies or is it the one that actually gets breath uh, and and maybe you guys can let me know in the comment section below what your opinions are and maybe we can answer that question. So let's go ahead and get started with this guy. So let's take a look at this guy first and foremost uh, for selling out. This is the first one we have. And it's very important that you guys do this when they're level one because it just makes it way easier. So when we inspect this character, you're going to notice that the attack value is 148. But the real number we want to be looking at is this 110 value. So this 110 one is extremely important because that's going to be the base value without any passive skills added onto the character. Now, 110 is the lowest one you could possibly get. So I already know that this one is definitely not a keeper. So we're going to move on to the next one. The next one's attack value is 112. Now, I do want to state that there is a different value when it comes to the 112 and the defense value because this one also has base values as well, uh, which I'll talk about uh, you know further in the video. I'll give you guys the base values for each and everything so you guys know exactly what's up. So once again, back to the attack. 112 is the second uh, base value. So this is number two. Now, we're going to move on to the next one. For the next one, guys, once again, base value is 112. All right. And for the next one, we have 112. And for the last one, I went ahead and created. This one has an attack value of 113. The highest value you could get is 113. Okay. So you have 110, 112, and 113. If you're looking for someone that is going to be your main attacker, you want to make sure that his va base value is 113. Now, if you have a character that's 110 and 112, that means you're not going to be able to maximize the uh, base stats with this character. It has to be 113. Now, before I go further, I do want to state that just because it's 113, it does not mean that that is the maximum stat because 
the game actually comes in decimals. So it's 113 with a decimal behind it. Now, we don't know what that decimal is until we actually get it to level 50. Now, the game, what it does is when it gets to, like, let's say this is 113.20, it's going to round it off to 113. If it's 113.60, uh, it's going to round it up to 114. And that is where you want to be at. You want to get anything that's 113.50 and higher because it's going to round it up to the highest value of that attack power. So it drops within decibels. So there is no way for us to see that. But basically the rule of thumb is 113. It's a keeper. Level it up to level 50. And then use the website to determine if that is the highest amount of value you could possibly get. So... In quick retrospect, what is a level 113 max value character look like? Let me show you guys right now on the screen. All right, guys. So let me show you guys how this thing works within the website. So for example, here, guys, we put the first telling knot that we have within our inventory. So you basically just type in the name of the pal and you're going to put its level. So mine's is a level one. My HP is 581. So if I show you guys right here on the uh, screen real quick, you guys are going to see that it is a 581 character. So you guys know that we're inputting the right values. This is what you're basically going to be doing uh, whenever you guys are doing something. So you're going to go ahead and put the uh, 581. We're going to transfer over the attack. Remember, the attack is 113 base value and the defense is 62. So remember, you always want to go sh make sure. So you guys want to make sure you guys hover over the ability first before you guys determine anything. So you want to make sure you go through here to just make sure you get the right, uh, you know, the right number. So the number to the left is the main one you want to pick up. Once again, 113, 62. And, and once we have that determined, we're able to go in here. Okay, so you want to input the value here. You want to put the HP, the attack, and the defense. So once you have this, guys, we have this other column that's right here on this side, which is the potential IV. So that means uh, IV stands for individual value. If you ever played Pokemon or Digimon, you'll understand what this kind of means. Uh, basically, this is going to determine the individual value of this character that I have. Now, remember what I said, we don't know what the decimal point is for the 113 attack, and we don't know what the decimal point is of the defense attack until we actually get this to level 50, okay? Um, and you'll see what this means. So this is the minimum to the maximum. So for the HP, we know that we're, we don't have a really good HP. So we don't have the highest HP we could get with this character. That means we would either need to breathe another character with a higher HP value because there is one with a higher HP value. And we'll talk about what that is in a little bit. And basically on our attack, we're perfect. We just don't know what that decimal is. In addition to that, we need we could also breathe one another one with a higher defense because the higher defense is not 62. So if we go to this side right here, you're going to notice that the defense is between 0 and 30%. So right now, once you guys maximize it, it's going to be 30%. But based on this character that I have right now, it's only doing 18%. The attack is at 23.8 and the HP is at 15.71. So that means I could still breathe a more powerful pal than this one that I have here if I were to get a pal that has the right stats. So if I were to get a pal that has uh, 63, that would automatically boost everything up. As you see, everything gets boosted when I do that. So when I go here and I put 63 here, okay, the defense value changes, okay? Now, if I were to add a decimal to this here, if I were to add a 0.85, okay, here, you will notice that it goes up. But like I said, the game doesn't give us what that decimal is. We won't know that until we hit level 50, okay? But we do know the base value for it. Now, with that being said, we do know that we're lacking a couple stuff. We're lacking a pal with higher HP, and we're lacking a pal with higher defense. So then now it becomes a time to determine, do you want to keep breathing? Or do you want to uh, just, are you happy with just getting the, the base attack value as positive as you can? Or do you want to make sure you get the most powerful pal with the highest HP, with the highest defense and the highest attack power, that's where the whole MIG maxing comes into play. Now, with that being said, we're, we could see the difference of potential to see determine if it's worth us actually putting in that grind. So if we notice right here where it says um, potential stats of at level 50. So once you hit level 50, based on the stats that we have, the maximum HP we're going to get is 4,550. Uh, and the maximum we could possibly get if we had the highest level here would be 400, uh, 4, uh, 4,650. Now, 
is 100 points worth you trying to maximize that HP? That's gonna, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to answer that question in the comment section down below. Now, this one we don't know because we don't. We have to level it up to level 50 to determine if it's we have the highest attack, which is 782, which we'll level it up in just a little bit. And we also have the uh, defense value, which is going to be the highest defense value is going to be 708. So, you know, it's like about a 50, 58 point spread there. Now, we want to look at this one, which is the IV comparison, because the IV comparison basically gives you the maximum totals you could get and the average you get. Okay, so uh, for the average HP is 578. So we're above average with this character and the uh, we're, we're above the minimum and we're kind of like towing in the average, but we are not in the higher average. So basically, if I want to get an average character, I would look for something that's like 587 as far as HP is concerned or higher. Uh, we already are maximum at 113 when it comes to attack. And in defense, we're at 62. So we're still within the maximum range because average is 61. So we're almost there. So this is a really good character. The only problem with this character is the HP. But I could boost the HP uh, by passing uh, you know, skills to it and just focusing on that primarily. Now, it's stats gain per level. This is where the percentiles come into play because uh, this is a 10.5, 10, 10 uh, 10 a 12.8, and a 13.65. That's going to be the increments based on the levels that you increment. And this is going to kind of give you an idea of how the entry values for the uh, uh, individual values come into play. So, for example, we're going to be focusing on the attack. The attack is 28.82. And that is going to be if it's a 1353. So, like I said, we won't know that until we level it up. And luckily for you guys, I already leveled it up. So you guys will see if we got the highest base value, attack value, or we didn't. And these are pretty much the percentile bonuses that you have uh, per, per talent. So what we could do here is we could also determine once we go and we maximize the soul bonuses, what this will look like if we maximize everything. So we wanted to maximize our HP, our attack, and our defense, this is going to give us a different boost uh, that's going to determine where we're going to be based on the on the value here. So as you guys notice, the HP goes up, the attack goes up, the defense goes up, and we can get an idea of what that max value will look like once we go and waste souls. So let's give us a good example. It's like, okay, you should definitely waste souls on this one, or you shouldn't waste souls on this one, okay? So that makes really, really sense right there and it also gives us like if we have any condenser stars so we don't have condenser stars it's, it's so it's not if it's not a level five then it's our level four then it's going to give us this value which is 781 that we do have the the level four it's going to push it all the way to 937 so with that being said let's take a look at our, our for stallion not what he looks like at level 50 and if we made the right choice and we actually got a really good one or we didn't all right, fellas, so after a couple of XP farming, we have three characters in level 50. So we have the first one, which is a level 110. And he is the attack base value of him is 642. And it will go up to the spreadsheet and see, to see exactly where we're at. Uh, then we have our uh, uh, level 112 that we have here, 714. And our last one, which is our, our level, 100, uh, level 113, the base attack value is 752 after leveling him up to level 50. All right, so when we come back to the spreadsheet, we're going to be able to kind of fi figure out exactly uh, where we're at. So if we go here, you're going to notice that the mi uh, the minimum is 750 and the maximum is 782. Mine's is 752, so I do not have a... Uh, my, my attack is a decimal below, so that means it's 113... 50 point 50 and below so that means i have a very low 113 here so what i would want to do is i would be like okay well do i want to get a uh try to get another frost tally knot that's a 113 and with a higher decimal value to get me all the way to the highest attack which would be 782 okay so that is how you go ahead and determine if you have the right pal or if you don't have the right pal, and it's kind of going to be up to you guys to figure out, do I want to keep breathing pals, or should I just be happy with the one I have? But I hope this kind of gives you guys a better idea of how the uh, base stats work, and how to determine if you have the right pal, if you should sacrifice the pal, 
if you should uh, kind of condense the pal, if you should spend your stat points on that pal, or if you should just keep trying to lay some eggs to get a better pal in the long run. Of course, it just needs, uh, you know, you just need to get more cakes, basically. That's what it comes down to. And just time for the breathing process. And the great thing about this is that cakes are not that hard to get anymore because you can definitely use my farm method and how to get coins to buy all the materials in order to make cakes. So if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you check it out. But I hope you found this video helpful, informative. If you did, do me the huge favor, guys. Drop a comment, drop a like. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.